so thank you all for you know coming back from lunch. Hopefully it wasn't too hard to find the cafeteria and then your way back. Um, so I'm, I'm Prabhat, I, I lead the Data and Analytics Services Group, and the afternoon session is gonna be around uh, the data stack. So I'm sure you know, in the morning, Helen and Rebecca and you know, a lot of folks walked you through the, the broader system, the, the simulation side of things. Uh, we at NERSC, I think, appreciate that data is extremely important for science going forward. So uh, the afternoon is gonna be all around the data side. Um, so this is the, the schedule. Uh, so I did wanna connect some names to faces as well. So after I give you an, a quick overview, Shreyas Cholia, all right? So Shreyas is gonna be talking about data transfer tools. How do you move your data back and forth from, uh, from a supercomputer? Uh, Jalen is gonna be chatting about uh, file systems, best practices, uh, you know, how do you store, move, uh, write data to, um, to a file system. Uh, Quincy Koziol will be joining us remotely and he'll be chatting about IO libraries. So there's a lot of emphasis on, you know, how do you store and move data? That's, uh, that's a, a fundamental operation. Uh, in the afternoon, we're gonna shift more towards, uh, in, in, the, in the part after the break, we're gonna shift more towards analytics. So now that you know about how to store and manage your data, uh, how do you actually analyze it? So increasingly, Python and Jupyter are key technologies in that space, and uh, Roland is gonna you know, walk you through those. Um, I think initially we had Shane uh, in place for, Shane Cannon in place for uh, Shifter, a particular container technology, but uh, Roland is gonna speak uh, you know, on, on Shane's behalf. And finally, at the end of the day, I'm gonna be uh, chatting about deep learning. So I think that's mostly the DAS staff that's in the room uh, at, at the moment. Now, you really should feel free to interrupt us at, at any point and you know, ask us questions. Um, you can engage with nurse staff by sending tickets to consultantnurse.gov or you can chat with us in person. So now that we are all here in the room, uh, you know, please interrupt us, ask questions, catch us in the break, catch us you know, after the day is over because we really are looking forward to interacting with you today. All right, so I think I mentioned that um, you know, data is, is extremely important for NERSC and very often if you look at an organizational structure, you can, you can make out what the priorities are. So at NERSC, um, you know, we have the systems department that makes sure that our systems are performing and running all the time. Uh, you heard from, uh, again, Rebecca in, in the morning on the HPC side of things. Uh, and then we now have a data department that is, uh, whose charter it is to make sure that our systems are responsive to the emerging, the current and emerging data needs of the user community. So I lead the DAS group, uh, you know, we manage the, the user-facing data stack. Uh, we have the data science engagement group led by Debbie Bard, uh, who has specific strategic engagements with different science communities. Damian Hazen leads the storage systems group, so they manage HPSS, the archival system, and the file systems. And then Corey Snavely leads the infrastructure services group. So even though today, you know, DAS will be sort of presenting the user-facing data stack, but there are several groups uh, who, who have a lot of active roles in, in the data space. All right, so hopefully I think this is clear to you by now, but we've tried our best to make sure that Cori, uh, as a single unified system, can support both simulation and data workloads. Uh, I would say that maybe three or four years ago, there was a, a genuine question mark at NERSC on whether we should have a different system that does data and data analytics, and then maybe a separate system that does simulation. But we made the strategic decision that you know, a single system will, will do a good job in supporting both. So uh, I, I think some of you who, uh, so I, I guess I did want to get a sense for it. Um, are you, I, I guess who is a, a new user to nurse? You are just maybe getting started. Maybe if you can raise your hands. All right, sounds good. And how many of you have already logged on to nurse systems are familiar with NERSC? Okay, all right, so you're predominantly uh, you know, new users. Um, <laughs> So we do have the, the Intel Haswell partition. Um, in many ways, if you really do not want to modify your code, um, then, uh, then the Haswell partition is where you can continue to run your, your jobs. But going forward, of course, uh, truly leveraging many core computing is, is important. And uh, the Knight's Landing partition is what is recommended uh, for, uh, for, those, for those needs. So I'm gonna come you know, in a few slides to what are some of the data specific features that we've configured on Cori. Uh, but first, uh, I do wanna walk you through the stack. So again, if you are a, a data user and there is some software or a service that you wanna leverage, this is the production stack that we support uh, at, at NERSC. So if you care about data transfer and access, so let's just take, talk about data transfer for a moment. Uh, you know, you have your data set in your lab, there is maybe a remote instrument, and you'd like to move that data set to NERSC. 
then we recommend that you use Globals and Grid FTP. Those are the two tools that, that you can use. Once your data is in place here, um, chances are that you want to share the data set with the rest of your community. So uh, web portals become very important, um, and you know, th there are a range of technologies that you can use. More and more, beyond just sharing data with other users, uh, it is maybe also important to share code or your analysis scripts. And Jupyter is a key technology that you can choose to leverage for, for that. Sorry, is there a problem? Keep going. All right. So workflows, um, chances are that you need to move a lot of data, manage a lot of data, analyze a lot of data, and you need to do this repeatedly. Uh, you want to make sure that the entire workflow is automated. So there are a few tools that you can use. Fireworks is a fairly sophisticated tool that uh, understands all of the file systems, the queuing systems at NERS that hopefully you heard about in the morning. And you can choose to use Fireworks to capture and automate your workflow. Task Farmer is another technology that, uh, that we support here at NERS. So if you have embarrassingly, collections of embarrassingly parallel jobs, then Task Farmer can in many ways take care of that uh, you know, important use case. Now I'll note that many communities already have workflow tools uh, pre-decided for them. Uh, and we try to work with those communities to make sure that the workflow tools will work, uh, will continue to work at NERSC. Now, data management, I think, is a, is a key bit. And again, it's one of those things which you, you know, only learn when maybe you're in grad school or, or as a postdoc. Uh, someone has maybe already decided a data management scheme for you, how you're going to be storing your data, you know, maybe as CSV text files or, uh, you know, or, or, or some other scheme. But the moment you start talking about big data sets, terabytes of data, tens of terabytes of data, or even, even you know, hundreds of gigs of data, it is really quite critical that you pay attention to how you're storing your data sets. So um, modern I.O. libraries like HDF5, NetCDF, uh, Root, uh, have all of the, the good characteristics, I would say, of, of a, you know, a data management solution. So you're welcome to use those. We support those uh, at, at NERSC. And then if you do want to use databases, it makes sense perhaps for you to use a database, then MongoDB, MySQL, and Postgres is what we use. Um, so these are all tools that are well supported at this point in time. I'll mention quickly that in, in terms of visualization capabilities, if you care about scientific visualization, then Visit and Paraview are two tools that uh, the DOE, the Department of Energy community, has been developing for a long time. Uh, but if you care about information visualization, then of course Matplotlib in Python, ggplot, and in, in R, those are all you know, reasonable choices. Now, frankly, uh, I think a lot of the buzz in, in the entire data stack tends to be in the analytics area. And uh, this, this you know, capability, in, in particular, has been evolving very, very fast over the last five or 10 years. So uh, you know, you're not going to see C, C++, and Fortran here in this slide. Um, I think we all recognize that people care about higher level languages. So more and more, uh, Python is the recommended language if you, wanna, if you care about generic analytics. If you're a statistician and you want to run sophisticated statistical analysis, then R is a, is a tool that you can use. Uh, Julia is an emerging language that you may choose to explore. Uh, Spark is an interesting framework, an analytics framework that, again, you can also leverage. Now, there are legacy tools like MATLAB and Mathematica that, of course, you know, have been there for a while and will be around. Uh, so you're welcome to use those. And finally, there are uh, you know, a bunch of libraries in the deep learning space that I'm going to get to towards the end uh, of the presentation. So this entire stack is in production. So it's, it's there. It's available to you. You're welcome to use it. There is documentation. You can file trouble tickets with us. You know, we try to make sure that we work with vendors to ensure that every single technology in this stack is performant and scalable, runs well on our systems. Um, so beyond just the software and services, we've tried to make sure that there are you know, a number of features on Cori which are data friendly. So as I mentioned, you know, we do have Haswell and uh, KNL compute nodes. We do ha also have a, a large number of login nodes that you can use. Uh, you know, Rollin is going to go into uh, Jupyter notebooks and the fact that we have dedicated nodes for Jupyter. Soon we'll have uh, dedicated compute backend nodes for, for Jupyter. Uh, perhaps there are some jobs that will run in serial but require a lot of memory. So there are some big mem nodes that, that you can use. Uh, there are some workflow, dedicated workflow nodes where you know, perhaps you need to let your workflow manager run for a long time. So those, those nodes can be used. I think we also certainly appreciate that um, uh, data users require you know, maybe a single serial job running for a long time, uh, multiple serial jobs running on a single node. 
uh, and then also the, the capability to move data. So there are dedicated queues that you can leverage. One of the unique things that we see in the, in the data space is, is real time. So um, perhaps you have a cryo EM microscope or you have a telescope or you know, some other device and it is time sensitive for you to move the data from a remote source to a compute node and do the analysis. So now there are real time queues in place that, uh, that can let you do that. Interactivity again is really quite key. So you know, again as a data user, maybe the, the prospect of waiting in queue for three days to run your analysis is not very appealing. So, um, so I think interactivity says uh, you can use the interactive queue, submit your job, and hopefully you'll get you know, command shell, some compute nodes uh, fairly uh, on, on a short time order. IO is, again, is, is key. So um, you know, making sure that you can read and write data fast um, is, is important. And I think what we are seeing increasingly is that GPFS and Lustre file systems are not keeping pace. So the burst buffer technology is something that you can, uh, you can choose to use. All right, so all of these are, uh, features that we've tried to configure on Cori to make sure that uh, you, know, you as a data user are, are productive. But if there are things that you're still struggling with, uh, you know, please let us know. All right, so I think I'll, you know, I'll just make a few asks of you for the remainder you know, four hours. Um, please engage with us. You know, the, the reason we've set aside four hours today is to be able to talk to you and uh, maybe educate you, but then also learn from you on what is and what is not working well. And do tell us about your interesting science problems. I mean, fundamentally, the reason we in the DAS group, you know, other staff at NERSC work at NERSC as opposed to doing the same job in the industry uh, is because we care about science. So if you have any interesting science problems that you want to work on, that you want to you know, have breakthroughs in over the coming years, then please tell us about it and you know, we can, we can po uh, provide you with some pointers. All right, so I'm going to stop there and while we do the switch, are there any questions or comments for me? All right, so Shreyas, I think you're...